when I first came here, there was almost no trees. There was almost no birds. It was a really rocky, barren, windswept place. It had a tourist resort that had started about eight to 10 years earlier. We first started to fly guests here in the early 1990s and flying over this place and watching it and looking at it and thinking about it. And the forest had started to recover, but it was a long, long process and there was no guarantee which way it would go. But our culture and our philosophy is um, sustainability. It's about preserving and protecting these amazing places. So we make no secret of it to our guests that, yeah, I know it's not cheap to come here, but you'll have a great holiday. But one of the things we'll do is we will spend the money that we've got left on our forests and on our sustainable initiatives. So people love to see that. So we're, we're just moving into an initiative now of, of carbon offsetting for the airplanes. We're going to keep a small amount of money. We're, we're thinking it'll be either two or three dollars per person as an additional to their cost to go towards carbon offsetting for their airplane ride, but also a couple of dollars towards the forest. But of course, the other, I mean, there's many things we're doing, you know, we're solar power, desalinated water, our, our wastewater system, our new um, waste management process, the OSCAR. There's so many of them. Let's learn, let's modify our behavior because we need to, if we want to think for our children and their children and five generations ahead. So I thought long-term in myself and the way I did things with my family and my wife, and I was also a dreamer. But if you don't have dreams, how can your dreams ever come true? You know, you've got to have something to dream about. You, know, you look at sustainable initiatives and you go, well, that's costing money. As a business person, it's not making me any money. So my early days was, oh, we can't afford to do that. But look at this business now. Look at this island. And, and it is so successful from the point of view of patronage, from the point of view of support, from the point of view of actually achieving sustainable initiatives. Why? To me, it's because we've done those things. So we've done them without any intent to make money. We've done them without looking at what they're going to give us, but they've given us. Inspiration and education are two really similar words. We educate people to understand that the more you give, the more you get. Well, the more you plant those trees, the more your island's going to get better. Or well, the more you do these things, the more people are going to come and support you. I mean, how, how do you put a value on that? Now, we have a philosophy of whenever we've got to make a decision here, there's two things we weigh up. The obvious one is what's its financial impact? What's it going to cost? What's it going to earn? Blah, blah, blah. But the less obvious one, but the one that's dominating more and more our thinking, is the environmental impact. What's that going to do to the environment? How's that going to look after our little island, but more importantly, the bigger picture? Because this is just a small portion of a great big ecosystem called planet Earth, which we're all shareholders in. We all belong here. You can't ever forget that your business has to be financially viable. You cannot lose sight of that. And there's so many examples on the planet of, as they say, when poverty comes in the window, love goes out the door. Well, it's a bit the same in business. When poverty comes in the window, the wages check's not getting paid, your staff are going out the door, the, the income's the receiver, you've got to make your business pay. It has to be foremost. However, it has to be balanced, and balance is a key word. It has to be balanced with how it's impacting the environment, the, the immediate environment, but in, in the bigger picture, the whole environment. Doing the right thing by the environment isn't bad for your market, because your market looks it's great, he's doing a good job. We, we say, what makes this business work? There's four things that make this business work. Our, our crew, our guests, our financial situation, our environment. But where does, where does the priority go? To me, the priority is the crew. If I haven't got the right crew and they're not looking after this place, then everything else will fall down. The environment is next. The crew have got to look after the environment and protect it and show it off and make it safe for then the guests who are third on the list to come out here and enjoy it. And if we do that well, employ the right people, they care about the environment, they look after the environment, so the guests love the thought of the environment, want to come out and see it, the guests have a great time. The financial side, as long as I'm financially sensible about what we do, will look after itself. You know, we've got a hundred odd guests here on any given night now. It sounds like if we had more rooms, we could maybe have two or three hundred, but if we had two or three hundred, what would that do to the sustainability of this site? It's a little island. So A, the island's impacts would grow to the point where I think we would hurt it, but B, the experience that that guest would have would be reduced or less because there's more people around. So we've just said no. We're a Queensland product, we're an Australian product, we're a Great Barrier Reef product and we try and share.